was at actually. Uh, I believe so. I believe that I, was I think that was the LMBM pre, pre yeah, pre it, was an, it was a pre Yeah, which is the only other one I was at. Yeah. That's funny. You're talking uh, about the only one I have a frame of reference for. But speaking of right now, we're just starting with a Mr. Saturn. This is the Ling Classic and speaking of who's different in winners and losers, right, is Ling as well. So good at adapting. When you give him an extra set to work with, it's just, you know, Jen's gotta beat him not once but twice here, and I believe the last time they played at Encore as well, Ling took it. Very well could be the case here today as we start off seat. pretty even thus far. Some a couple of solid combos, a couple of solid mix-ups, these two, and what generally peach matchups end up devolving or evolving into, depending on your perspective, um, is just footsies. Which for some players and some characters, that's amazing. For some players and characters, Peach generally has the advantage there. Palutena though has plenty of utility in order to play that game. And she has great tools as well, right, to contest that float space yeah. that Peach wants to occupy. And as well, right, you're talking about the footsie game. We were talking earlier, Ling's footsie's kind of handicapped just a little bit recently. That jab not gonna do it, Ling's not gonna get caught out misty eyeing, but he is gonna get caught by that back air. Calling out the neutral get a very smart option there from Jen because even if Link comes with a get up attack or something, that backer's invulnerable. Yeah, it's it's the level zero, right? I continuously say this about like a lot of characters and especially a lot of good characters, right? There are some things that are just good to do. And everybody knows you're gonna do it. Everybody knows that Palutena backer at ledge is really heckin' good. But who's gonna stop you? Yeah. And if you stop doing it, then suddenly you're relinquishing a lot more than you're gaining by this, like, your nebulousness, your kind of amb ambiguity, just doesn't have any threat. But exactly, or to put it another way, right? If they ain't broke, don't fix it. You keep yeah, doing right? it. You keep doing <laughs> it. If you have a broken option, right? I pick my, my I, I do minecart because it is good, right? Yeah. That is the smash meme. It's just, when your options are broken, you keep doing them until they stop working because Otherwise, you're just letting your opponent get a free adjustment. And we're seeing that out of Jen right now. He is just finding right, these day one Palo Classics, these broken options, because Ling's not stopping him for them. Yeah, it's one of the biggest downfalls of Peach and one of Palutena's biggest strengths. Uh, not just the fact that back air and dash attack are invulnerable, but the fact that Palutena is fast as hell. And Peach, despite float being such a good move, Peach is extremely floaty. Shout out to the shield poke. Yeah, and we've all <laughs> seen that Jen use down tilt in a couple different ways. But you were talking, or, um, sorry, up tilt. It doesn't just us, right, have a disjoint that's really good against Peach, but it low profiles it, hurt box shifts you, and kind of lets you swing under that flow and then pressure whatever with a huge disjoint that puts you in a juggle situation. Ooh, almost getting the hold down was Ling, but instead it's gonna eat so much damage for that uh, attempted reversal from ledge, or the attempted coverage from, for the teleport. Things are just getting out of hand here, Ritual, and Jen is starting to cook as well. Yeah. Uh, barely missing the teleport cancel, but these nares and back airs will make up for the difference. Amazing placement on the down tilt, too. He is going right now. And I'm just gonna say, right, Ling certainly not out of this one yet. If, if he can find this stock, uh, uh, Peach more than capable of closing it. The jab not gonna do it just yet. Ling still having that float. They're using it to get back low, but not able to get away from this active hitbox. Jen's ledge trapping since that Peko set has been incredibly efficient. And the recovery angle too into the back throw. Just so, so well played from the Prince himself. Storming through that game number one without even a care in the world, without a flinch in his uh, a flinch in his uh, facial expression, and a total shutdown of the, um, one of the the East Coast's best peach. Yeah, I was gonna say the East Coast's best peach. You know, one of the top probably right, three Mute's, peaches. Mute's in Texas, Texas now, yes. right? Yeah, he, he was Florida, um, but now yeah, he's he Texas. was Florida. Now he's Texas. You've got Mute, you've got Ling, and you've got Umeki in Japan, and right. those are and you've got. Uh, I think there's one peach in Europe too, right? Uh, oh my I want to say, I want to say there's one European peach, there's, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. There's, um, there's maybe a couple big peaches, but LA. those are those are definitely the big ones. And there's a couple peaches even in the like the Long Island, like yeah. Westchester area. Uh, shout out to Cody, of yep. course. Who I, was, is, I was gonna say you've got Cody yeah. and you've got uh, Player Four. Right. Uh, who could forget Reggie? <laughs> he doesn't let you. <laughs> no, he, no, he does not. That man may not have a combo game, but what he does have is immaculate defense. And 
that defense is something Ling's gonna look to replicate here on Small Battlefield. Try and get away from this Palutena. Try and, even with that reduced space, like, kind of just find, weave around you, right? Find that micro spacing game more, and maybe even find a bomb, something we haven't seen from him tonight. Yeah, I mean, you never know with that uh, that fun little X Factor we got going. Oh, Dash Dancing with Peach right in front of Jen. It didn't actually amount to anything, but the just the fact that Ling has been looking like he's willing to change up how he's approaching this matchup is already something that Jen has to be ready for because we're seeing Ling commit to a lot more harsher angles, steeper floats, and more a willingness to hold forward. I absolutely agree, and just so far though, right, he's managing to make some adjustments, keep this a lot closer, or he's finding ways to slow it down, and and is finding opportunities to pull at least the occasional turn up, but gonna get juggled. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, right, Peach is floaty, and when she hangs in the air, you know, you set yourself up to get juggled by one of the best jugglers in the game. That being said, still able to close out the sock. Yeah, still very, very even thus now as Ling, oh, out of float, but still well in range, trying to use this turnip and trying to get the stuff, like the, the goo started with these turnips off of ledge, but no dice up until for the turnips, we're still getting a full peach combo to a 70% and potentially more, if not for that teleport. Jen realizing that you have to take that damage and sometimes just get out of dodge. And that's and that slight platform extension from Ling, right, so good too, even though it also allowed Jen to get out. It did allow Ling this extra damage, and he's been able to maintain this pressure, rack on a whole extra, you know, 40%, essentially a second combo, and continue this corner situation. Jen hasn't been able to get away. He hasn't been able to get past this platform. Ling's kind of intentionally seeded it to him to let him, you know, to and then caught him on it and finally getting away. Yeah. It took a lot of damage to get it, though, and Ling is still using these floating, these, like, Float double jumps to catch Jen in just these uh, unawares with some of the more grounded or uh, short hop pokes. And that Nair from center stage is going to do it. Strong hit, no problem. Jen needing quite to control this ledge for as long as possible. But again, Link comes down aggressively with turnip on block. He says, hold that. Not only was it an aggressive come down though, but it was after a great defensive adjustment. We didn't, haven't seen a float stall that long from Ling all set. And he brings it out to get around that explosive flame, knowing the limits of his character perfectly. And he's played around these lower small battlefield platforms so well, kind of taking the alternate lane to Palu every single time to allow him to get out of these juggle situations for free. Yeah, and Jen is going to need to have to f return his to form with those said juggles if he's going to need to bring this game back and send us immediately into true finals. The up tilt's not going to do it quite yet. Up airs as well, hunting, but a good drift from Ling just to go straight to ledge and let the back airs begin. Yep, and we've seen some slight timing mix-ups right on these right. float cancel back airs. Even though it's just the same move over and over, you're gonna still keep Jen guessing. And and now, right, we see the full float back air as well to force that even further, but Jen able to convert it into a juggle and bringing it into a very doable range. What we have here, Ritual, is a win condition, and Jen is certainly applying it time and time again. All of these up airs reset below. Oh, but a great mix up there from Ling using the air dodge on reaction. Let's see if Jen is able to keep this comeback alive, or will, get, will he get shut down by Ling? One of those back airs certainly going to do it. Oh, the Nair not able to come out in time. Yep, and looking for another Nair here. Now just finding some safe shield pressure there with that float there. But the drift back, that micro spacing on the fair as well to get Thank away. Hey, coming out. Don't make me, don't make me. AJ had me <laughs> all last night. I'm going to do one tonight, but you're not going to know when it's coming. And the dash attack, though, from Jen, just this is a last hit scenario, Google, and I have no idea who's going to take this one. It's going to be that same stance, almost doing it, turn up in hand, prepping the Nair, but unable to get the timing right on the float next to ledge. Dash attack trying to do it. Back Oh, we could see Jen walk with this. Disadvantage is going to mean everything, if played correctly, going that, to ledge. And the up air pressure there from Ling, right? Forcing Jen just to back off, allowing him that window to get back. Oh my and way. calling out the shield drop again. And that was the same timing, too, that Pekka caught him on earlier. Jen had the same shield timing, drop timing on both games he lost. Let's check this out, because Jen gets fancy with the movement. Back air, down tilt. I think this turnaround right here, 
that turn on might have not been was he caught well, on frame one of the shield drop too there it looked like i feel like this turnaround from jen like he didn't want to do this like he's prepping with fair and he positions for back air but ling holding forward getting into positions where jen doesn't want to be getting in playing Instead of playing back or allowing a Ling to, thinking that Ling wants space, he instead has been finding ways to get into Gen space and forcing awkward positions out of the Prince of New York. And Ubal, I want to talk about this stage pick for a second from Gen because right, that center plat here on Hollow Bastion is so good for juggling Peach, but also if she can win neutral, put you off stage and establish that stage control. Oh, oh. The center plot as well, right, allows her to control the entirety of stage with Turnip. Hollow Bastion is just such a good stage for characters that have no problem closing out stocks on Blast Zones like FD, but you want that platform and you want the utility that it provides, it like, exactly there. Getting able to teleport right to center stage, but that up smash, oh, weak hit, but it still closed out the stock. Absolutely, somehow. It's gonna be Ling coming away with it early, even on the counter pick, and getting a whole nother corner situation to boot. He has put on relentless pressure here in games number two and three, really figuring out Jen, how Jen likes to get out of the corner and been calling him out. Jen finally finding a mix up into the reversal here. Oh, that Nair intercepting, able to utilize, utilize the platform still throughout these uh, throughout this game, but more and more times Jen is forcing himself to whip, but not in stupid fashion. So he gets punished a couple times. I mean, we're at 65%, so the punishes were definitely there. But by forcing yourself to whiff, you're uh, in safe spacings, you get Ling being over-aggressive too early, and thus you can find options out of shield to get those reversals started. And this is a, 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 prior, a stage priority control, or stage control priority from Ling here. He's playing around intentionally the edges of these platforms, right. so that if he if he wins, right, he gets the platform to help with his juggle. But if he loses, well, then he's put out from under the platform, and Jen can't use it to extend on him. It's some really smart, just like micro spacing, micro stage control stuff from Ling here. And we, and virtually make we see that like sense of control come in time and time again. Ling is while Jen loving is loving like underneath this platforms and using the ground to his advantage. Ling is kind of just making a triangle between the edge of the platform and the and the edge of the stage, and just using that as a as like a means of creating his own spacings and doing an excellent job of it, but that back here almost closing out the stock. Both characters will be able to recover, but will we be able to get off the ledge? Yep, that being said, Float Bite and Peach's Drift in general, so good against something like Explosive Flame, because the startup, you can kind of just react, fade away from it. It's True. very hard for a character like Peach to get caught by it with how much movement she has horizontally, and the Float Cancel grab, the fourth though not going to do it just yet, but this is Ling's corner situation to drop and the dash back next up. We have not seen that one so far, and Ling looking to close it out right here. We've not seen it connect, but we have seen him go for it a couple times over Winky Face, but no oh, it used against him. One of the best things that I saw Jen utilize in game number one was his ability to Z catch these turnips in disadvantage, shutting down an easy means of edge guard. Used it again there, but not in disadvantage, in just out of shield and to turn it into offense. And Ling missing that dash grab, a little bit of a rare over commitment from him, but then using the float to immediately dance around that auto radical. And again, right, we're seeing him occupy uh, this right edge of this platform, or this left edge of this platform, or or um, okay to play in the corner because he, at all costs he doesn't want to give Jen these juggle extensions. And we're going to see if this Xeno you know, ends right now as Ling continues to pull away, adding in devious cross-ups thanks to the shield pressure that he's applied with back air and nair and like all of Peach's toolkit and just catching Jen who wants to approach with shield in the worst positions. But this ledge trap is going to be so much. He just knew to get up rolls. And he tried to call out the shield drop with the jab again, but this time Jen being patient, gonna make it happen, applying so much pressure. Ling is looking to close out. You can tell he does not want to let this go to a reset. The fourth throw, looking with a backer, gonna find it, but not able to close it out. This could still be anyone's corner situation, Ubal. What a teleport there, and getting back to stage to the teleport being so quick. 
Ling falling behind the eight ball just a little bit. Jen using that speed, but the spot dodge misses the fair afterwards. We're seeing that position switch now. Jen constantly finding himself stuck in the corner. But using that platform, what an amazing cross up from Ling once more. Looking to end this set right here and right now. And Another grab comes yeah, out. And this time the forward throw, right? But I I I think some great the I mix up the dare not gonna connect on all its hits. Jen getting out and able to teleport back now with a turnip as well, gonna increase his ledge trap. But this time, Ling's Pajan is going to allow him to dodge that back air wall Ling and is, has ooh. another opportunity, Ubal. Ritual, this is Max Rage. This is Max Rage Jen here. And these back airs oh, and these no. back throws are going to be so scary. But there's the FD Blast Zones, right? Coming in back to bite him. And that back throw would have killed on almost any other stage. And Ling, with that one last lease on life, oh, now at Max Rage himself. Oh, a back air from him is going to do it. A back throw from, or a fourth throw from him might do it as well. It that air connected. And oh my, Ritual, we're getting to see the ending come in oh clutch, no. but back air to back air. And I don't know if you saw that, but he wasn't in hit stun when he hit the blast zone. Yeah. I don't know what Ling hit, but he had a frame where he was active at the end there, it looked like. Yeah, but the, just by the raw speed of it, I'm not sure if he could have done anything besides that. I mean, look at these two analyzing their win conditions. Just a single hit will do it. But the difference maker, the Palutena Bear, breaking through that wall of aerials that P that Ling was setting up and closing yeah. out the stock and closing out the set into jump, the reset. Yeah, jump came out right before the blast zone yeah. there. So unfortunate from Ling, but I am super pumped to get to see more games between these two, Ubal oh, and Ling, opening it up so quick with a fantastic advantage. His pressure, the speed at which he's played, he's just turned it up to 11 right now. Yeah, it's time to turn, it's time to start your change-ups. It's time to start throwing different pitches and seeing how Ling reacts. You've got another couple games to work with, so let's see what works and capitalize on the deflation that Ling may be feeling. Ling, though, a veteran of this game and a veteran of many, uh, many grand finals, especially here, potentially here at Xeno as well. So he's not going to be uh, perturbed by the situation he finds himself in. And Ling is kind of intentional here, backed out to the corner a lot, and then use this, use these platforms. Arms, not necessarily the same level as Hollow Bastion, but he's saying he's telling Jen to either get caught by his landing or reset back to neutral. Peppers back and forth. Oh, a great movement once more from Ling. But Jen is just in here like, yeah, I'll take the grab. That's fine. <laughs> like, what are you gonna? Your your death percent at of a, from a throw from Peach is looking like 150 at the ledge, 170 or 180 center stage. You got a couple. You got a bit to work with there. And meanwhile, you got all the rage to use these aerials for. Up till not doing it quite yet. Yep. And that but that was so smart from both of them, right? I the fact that Ling was able to just fade above the up air, but then that Jen was able to fast fall catch it with the up tilt, El, catching Ling trying to just get back down after that, and now taxing all these resources. Ling though just playing a patient with the turnip in hand, trying to find it back and get in a combo, but that patient is now gonna cost him and the back air, Jen gonna keep this one even making Ling work for every single hit. Yeah, you got to make Peach hard earn all of these combos because when one one hit can turn into five very, very quickly. So you make that one hit be a bastard. And Jen is certainly doing that for enough. Like 50% just ends up happening, but a great hold down there from Ling to get out of the corner. Got to have these mix-ups on deck because we're three, we're four games in and with no sign of stopping between these two, just the footsies in this corner turning into Jen's advantage. Yep, and that forward air from Ling somehow not getting punished. Jen finding the forward air back air there just to crack on some damage, continue this advantage thing, and with the resources out, he had an opportunity, but the micro drift on Ling's upbeat, he is the best in the world of that. I'm just gonna say it right now. Just a little shimmy. That's yep. all you need. It's all Take you need to get shake, the right? get the uh, get Jen to pull the trigger early, and he can go right to ledge. Be Peach, Pe right, Peach, Peach is like Shakira, man. Those hips don't lie. You just gotta get that little shimmy. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here first. Heard it here first. As Jen is looking to make sure that he is not made a fraud in this, uh, in his defense of New York, coming from the losers bracket. But Ling able to hard read that teleport. Everything is just matters so much of the like. It feels like Jen is able to mitigate so much of Ling's advantage in these ledge traps thanks to the utility of teleport and the mix-ups that it provides. Yeah, and with the fact that Jen finally right found an explosive flame, they're going back. 
Ak, after all of the mix-ups he threw out, he threw out, out catching Ling on a down air. It's been so smart, but Ling somehow finding the float cancel grab. He has an opportunity to close out this lead, Ubel, but Jen has been so hard to pin down, and the back air, the dash attack, really been the MVP for him so far in this game, too, because he's been able to contest Ling after playing this keep-away game, and there's nothing Ling can do about it because he's already pushing a button and he has to contest an invulnerable move. Yeah, I mean, you're sitting at these, like, extreme percentages, so what does Peach want to do? Well, throw out nairs and back airs ad nauseum to see when, whenever one connects, that means it's gone. Usually the ma that means risk-reward is in your favor, but not against Palutena dash attack. Against Palutena down tilt, though, yeah, it's going to be in your way. <laughs> As yep. we got ourselves a 0-0 zero, zero game ritual. Yep, nair one of... Peach's most active hitboxes, right? Being able to hit so much of that immediate space around her, so it hits high and low, contests that up tilt that's done so much work for Jen so far. But the drag down, finding three nairs into a back air and just gonna rack on the damage. Ling once again trying to find a way out of the corner. Great spot dodge to do so. Damage, 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 but no follow up after the down throw. The platform getting in the way just a little bit. Both of these two having so many, so much like depth. We're in the real depths of their mix-ups and the real, like, a couple Yomi layers in, but they're still keeping up with each other, crossing up spot dodges, playing around all of their options, and the percents get even more even as each game goes on the dash attack into that forward air, and it'll do it, game one to Ling. And Ling says, hold this crown because you're not taking mine. I was winner's side, and I'm gonna close it out. The only one you're gonna get is my is Peach is sending you into the blast zone, and that's why he's wearing the cat ears, man. Like, look at, I, I just like, he yeah. is so stoic, and seeing him with those cat ear, ear headphones gets me every single time. Like, the contrast is just beautiful. Yeah, he, he rocks it. Someone Rock clip it. this, put it on Twitter. <laughs> But man, this is well played from well played from both players. Each and every single one of these games, except like maybe the first one where Jen kind of like held onto it pretty firmly. Ever since then, it has been a nail biter through and through. And we're running it right back to PS2 to see where game two lies. Ling trying to end this and send us home at the as the uh, as eleven has just uh, struck. But Jen trying to keep up his defense for his city. Yeah, no, Jen trying to push this to the limit, Ling trying to make sure you catch your train home on time, and just so well far, right, we're seeing both these players play a little bit more slowly than they have so far in these two sets, right? We're, we saw a lot of turnips, a lot of auto reticle early, but now the scrapping is coming back in, Ubel. Yeah, we're, we're passing it back and forth, and like we're seeing a much steadier game right now. Jen realizing that a faster pace isn't always guaranteed if the advantage that you get becomes empty. But if you're able to transform that advantage into something meaningful, it turns the game on its head because now you get to utilize that tempo for offensive purposes rather than just like control. Yep, and Jen right picking up right where he left off on that last dot. Uh, Ling hasn't really been able to hit him in about 40 seconds now. And it's Jen's just playing, honestly, a much more simple game movement-wise, right? He's just kind of jumping, full hopping, saying, contest me, and then I'm going to come down with a nair, I'm going to come down with a back air, and I'm just going to hit you for 60. Yeah, I mean, consider, right, like, the the way that Ling was playing before was a lot more based on this, like, on these immediate footsies, on capitalizing on different whiffs, or, or like, on overshooting whenever Jen would be dashing back. So now Jen has just been finding places to place hitboxes before doing those dashbacks and just constantly baiting, baiting, and baiting before going in for bashes like that up air. Just barely with it. But in Ling opting right to find that air dodge back into the corner, how close he landed to ledge, it looked like maybe that's what he was aiming for, but getting caught on stage, still not able to get too much, uh, uh, punish too much though. However, that forward though is gonna keep him in the corner and Ling needs to find a way, not just back to stage, but to close out the stock, because otherwise things are starting to get out of hand, Ubel. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna be a stock there oh, on both no. sides. The Nair was well placed from Ling in order to make, to uh, de-incentivize the edge guard, and in fact, find a huge reversal off of it. But you take that trade every day of the week if you're, if you're Jen. Yes, you do. And Jen here, right, trying to force it to a final game of this tournament, but 
Ling having the counter advantage that he does, and it's still Peach, right? This is a character that's still very capable of 0 to 100 in you, taking the stock and then just doing it again by pulling a bomb, pulling a Mr. Saturn. So that X Factor is there. It's just whether Ling can find it, whether he can capitalize on it. Yeah, and whether Jen gives him the right place to find a hit. Like the the way that Ling has to been approaching from the corner has been much more incentivized on you have to find an aerial in order to start. And these aerials are good. Back air goes crazy. But they aren't down tilt. And if they aren't grab. And if they're not these two key moves, then suddenly Peach has to work a whole lot harder up until a read like that. If it's going oh. to be aerial based, then why not change that up right at the very yep. last second? Link finding an up smash and turning this game well into his favor. What a and combo! Now finding the lead here, Ubel. Oh, oh, he called out that jump, saying how seeing how much right Jen was trying to just jumping around him, dancing right outside his range, and Link was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna play this like your blitz, Luigi. I'm gonna find a random up smash." Ash, now Jen with his back against the wall. He thought he had this in his reach just a moment ago, but starting to let it slip through his fingers, Ling does not want to let this one go without a fight. Yeah, but we're, we're at the magic number. We're at this 100% rage has uh, a plenty, and Peach, you got to find a much, you got to find a pretty strong start and a pretty strong st uh, finisher off of a stray hit. And Jen was trying to use that auto medic. There it is, Vite, that stray hit you were talking about, the up air, gonna close it. it Jen digging deep, holding on to the last thread of hope and closing it out to force us to a decisive game. Ling on that last route back when he got hit by the auto reticle had a slight delay on his on his float afterwards when it meant it didn't he didn't get called and we didn't see Ling go high like that at all. So Jen being able to just get up there air and just kill him for it. Fantastic. And this is where the and this is where like the difference between a players that are paying attention to recognize habits and the players that are paying attention to anticipate. And Jen is anticipating Ling, who had been going to ledge time and time again in stressful moments. He wants to find that hit. He hadn't done this in a little bit. Time to find that win condition. And consistently, for Jen, that win condition had been finding up airs. And he found it right there to send it to a final game of the set. And you know Ling's heating up when the layers are coming off. This man just stripped down his t-shirt between games. Taking a moment to breathe, right? Moment to reset, wipe that sweat off his face, and just cool down, you know, internally, but not gameplay wise, as he looks to close this out here on Small Battlefield. Yeah, going back to the site of game three, uh, of game two from last set, where Ling was able to take that game. Let's see if they're able to replicate success, or will Jen walk with this one? Literally, it's the last time we could. It's the last game of Xeno number 276, and Ritual, we're gonna, we're probably gonna see some fireworks if, I've, if, if the rest of the set is anything to go by. I certainly hope we see some fireworks, you know, as you said, right? Some explosions, whether it's an explosive flame, whether it's a bomb. Pull a bomb. Yeah. Pull, Pull a, a bomb. bomb. I'm, no, I'm right here with I'm you, a New, I'm a New Yorker, but it'd be hilarious, but that certainly wasn't if you're Jen dropping that stock so yeah, quickly. Not optimal DI, but also just kind of getting caught between a rock and a hard place, right? Hard Hard to know exactly what Ling was gonna throw out at you there. And Ling's just racking on this damage. I will say, you know, if if, if Ajax was here with us right now, right, and he said pull a bomb, it would have already come out. So true. Qu don't quite have his at his yeah. his magic within me, but we try. Yeah. I mean AJ can continue being the jinx as we get to watch Ling just call out the drop shield once again. That timing that you keep mentioning, Ritual, it seems to be continuously biting Jen in the butt, but that explosive flame spacing was exactly what Jen needed. 65%, that's the Palutena attacks. All it takes is one Nair. Yep, and there's that Nair again, right? Nair, Nair, up there. The juggle situation. Jen has been so good at these here in this matchup, taking full advantage of Peach's floatiness, as, but somehow Ling finding his way down only taking 40 and just able to maintain this lead, holding on to the thinnest of margins and trying to close it out before Jen can find another way back in this. The trade off of that back air was so huge, but the teleport, getting the weak hit of Nair set up Jen perfectly to do an upward. Wow, what a block string. And he called it out again. There no, was a Mr. Saturn. Saturn. Threw it away. <laughs> and honestly, if you're laying with a lead like this, I totally get that, right? I, 
You don't want to risk the reversal there of getting your shield broken, dying at 50, and suddenly letting Jen back in this game. Now, so, Jen's going to find his way back into this game. All natural with an up smash. Oh, no. Charging. Oh, hit below the ledge. Are you kidding me? That Palutena up smash been doing that since the game's release. Never been touched, but Jen will take that to the like, bank. Like, look at this thing. It, he floats, he delays, and it hits him below the ledge on the second to last active frame of that move. It, it, it's crazy, dude. And now Ling saying, okay, you got me with that one, but you're not hitting me with anything again. Racking on so much percent, and this is just straight hits, right? This isn't combos. This is just calling out Jen over and over and over to find this stage control. Yeah, hitting the 116 mark, a high, another high recovery to avoid the two frame, but Ling just controlling space, doing it, doing a Palutena impression. Honestly, as we get to the tune of 148, it's gonna have to be a big one from Jen. That turn up doing a pretty solid job of it. But where does it start? It starts right here with a couple up airs, a couple up airs, and Max Rage. What has Jen left? What does Jen have left in the tank? Not enough on that cross up, but it won't close out the stock quite yet. But and that the, one will do it. And the way he closed that out was so smart. By throwing the item, saying, "Okay, if you get hit, you're dead." But and we can. I want to jump in and break this that one down in a little bit more detail when we get there. But this item, right? This item toss. Um. Where was it? Oh, uh, right, he throws out, right, the item toss here forces either the catch or, right, the air dodge here is gonna, the air dodge, eh. the air dodge that comes out here either is gonna force a catch or go through it, and it, and regardless, right, you're, or you're gonna get hit, and you get caught in a frame trap where, well, once you catch that item and you come out of hit stun, you're still in that end lag, and Ling is just able to find the punish, right? With that fair, close out the game, and once the turnip comes out, it's a checkmate scenario. One of the best things that I had pointed out earlier, in fact, if, uh, uh, if you are paying attention, any, uh, you viewers at home, is the fact that in many offstage scenarios, Jen had been doing an amazing job of Z-catching those turnip tosses in order to um, just not expend any resources, catch the turnip, get back to ledge without a care in the world. However, in that particular moment, he hadn't done air dodge to catch at all. Always Z-catch, which leaves him vulnerable to an aggressive overshooting Ling, which Ling was in a perfect stance to do. So you air dodge catch that time, and you were trying to kill two birds with one stone. But Ling played one step ahead like he did basically the entirety of this game, setting up for the shield drop timings, finding cheeky block strings to continue his pressure, covering center stage on a much smaller, more enclosed space so well. And despite Jen's best efforts and a crazy up smash, that still is allowed to exist, uh, yeah. Ling is going to walk with Xeno number 276. And, and let's just be honest, right? The MVP of this set for Ling was these up smashes, and at that rate, you know, Paolo might need to hire, hire Ling to teach Pit how to read because, man, those up smash like he called out Jen on those jumps, what four, three, four times in that set, like twice that. in that last, in 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 those last couple games, like he was so efficient at just saying, okay, you're mixing up, you're mixing me up with these fastballs, with these jumps, with these aerials, but. There's a pattern, and he slowed it down, he kept it in the tank, and then he was just like, okay, you're gonna jump here, right? And just, and Jed's holding up, because he's trying to jump, find an up air, find something, and right. he just gets rocketed off stage at way earlier percent than he should. Yeah, and that is going to put it, putting Ling to the test, but inevitably walking with it in a two to one winner, uh, true final set over Jen. For, as that brings us to the end of Xeno for this week, still not Thursday, and uh, still bringing you the best games that New York and that Tri-State has to offer with a killer, killer set. Yes, sir. But we might have to go back to calling it Quad State because tonight. CT's on top, baby. And I'm just gonna say, you know, I have to drive Ling home after this. Break, maybe I can break. convince him to, <laughs> maybe I convince him to pay for my gas now. <laughs> of course, we all, uh, have to shout out. We had plenty of ads, but we have to shout out Hassle 3000, the best production team in uh, Smash, period. Uh, free them on Twitter, but you can be sure to follow them on Twitch and on YouTube at House of 3000. 
so we can always get this game and this production getting better and better and better as the time goes on. Absolutely, Ubel. And I also want to take a second to talk about a, a set of upcoming events across a couple different regions. First off, we, we have Eon Revelation in the mid-Hudson Valley. There's going to be a $1,000 pop bonus. Jeez. And I believe at the Dave & Buster's in Palisades Mall, there's going to be players from all over. Tri-State, New England, Philadelphia coming up. Even Waddy's coming up from MDVA. That's pretty so far. There's going to be some fantastic talent in attendance. And it's going to be Eon's last event. They really are the soul of Mid-Hudson, built that scene from the ground up. And so we'd love to send them off for a bang. Y'all should come out. And you should also come out to Match Harder 5, one of New England's premier events. Really, the premier regional seasonal event in Boston, hosted at Balance Patch, streamed on Collision. Uh, Cast and the whole Bay State Beatdown crew crush it every single time. Y'all should absolutely come out to this one. Yeah, and uh, that's going to do it for this stream. Uh, shout Again, of course, make sure you follow the stream and make sure you follow both of us if you liked what you heard, uh, which is there and here as uh, we bid you good night.